Since ancient times, Tibet, known as the Roof of the World, has served as a trade route between India and China, with its remote mountain passes used to carry spices, silks, wool and animal skins. In October 2003, customs officers at a checkpoint in the west of Lhasa inspected a truck heading towards the capital and made a startling discovery. This record haul lifted the lid on the alarming trade in tiger and other endangered animal skins between India and China. Concealed among bags of wool, the officers found 31 tiger skins, 581 leopard skins and 778 otter skins. Some of the skins had Delhi newspapers stuck to the back of them and the truck had come all the way from western Tibet. Since the early 1990s, international attention has been focused on the trade in tiger bone, used in traditional medicine. Yet new evidence shows how the skin trade poses an equally dire threat to the survival of the tiger in the wild. This map of tiger, leopard and otter skin seizures shows the scale of the illegal trade between India and China. This map shows only the most significant seizures that have taken place since 1993. These patterns show the existence of well-organised criminal networks trafficking tiger skins from India's forests via mountain passes in Nepal and Tibet to end markets in China and beyond. The trail begins in India's national parks, where enforcement officers keep a daily watch protecting the homes of half the world's remaining wild tigers. Snared, shot or poisoned by poaching gangs, these skins are collected at tanning centres in northern India, where they are cured for packing and transport. In many cases, the skins carry the buyer's signature, indicating a courier system to deliver the chosen skins to the buyer. In a number of cases in India, the signatures have been Tibetan. Kaga, a small town in the north of India, where in January 2000 a major seizure of skins took place. A tanning operation was discovered just 200 metres from a police station and a haul of four tiger skins, 70 leopards and 221 otters was confiscated as well as tiger and leopard bones and claws. Police investigations led to a number of arrests. The suspect's mobile phone records showed regular communication with Tibetans living in the Nepalese capital, Kathmandu. EIA travelled to Nepal to find out more about the Kathmandu link. Investigations led towards a group of Tibetans involved in trading antiquities and carpets. One businessman, while denying direct involvement in the trade, explained to undercover EIA investigators some of the trading routes used to smuggle tiger skins into Tibet. We have a lot of tiger in Nepal, but uh, no many people are going to kill it because there's a lot of skin coming from India. I think in India also there's luck now in that area. They bring from that side, from Delhi. Most of they bring also from Delhi. So Delhi is most uh, center. So from there, then they send it everywhere. They take from Ladakh to Tibet very easy. They're taking from Simla to take to Tibet very easy. Recent seizures confirm the role played by Nepal as a waypoint for skins from India en route to Tibet and China. A major haul of 109 leopard and 14 otter skins took place in Kathmandu in April 2003. The arrested stated he was just carrying the skins by bus to the Tibetan border. The next stop on the tiger trade trail is the Tibetan capital of Lhasa. Here, EIA learned of two distinct markets for skins smuggled from India. A local market for tiger, leopard and otter skin used as trim for traditional costumes 
and an export market for whole tiger and leopard skins used for luxurious home decor. EIA investigators witnessed dozens of shops in the Jokang area of Lhasa openly selling coats trimmed with leopard and otter fur. Traders said business was growing due to economic development. This coat was for sale for $850. In one shop, the investigators were led into a back room where the owner revealed how the export market for whole skins operates. Whole leopard skins are sold for $800 to both Chinese and overseas tourists. The owner also claimed to sell whole tiger skins for $10,000 to wealthy Chinese. A second traditional clothing shop also offered whole leopard skins and said he sells to foreigners living in Beijing, Hong Kong and Taiwan. <laughs> Evidence from Lhasa points towards mainland China as a major market for big cat skins. On several occasions, EIA witnessed Tibetan traders approaching Chinese tourists and offering animal skins. The booming cities of South and East China are one of the final destinations on the tiger skin trail. The fondness of wealthy businessmen for tiger skins as a status symbol is shown by a case in Xiaomen, Fujian province. When a major corruption scandal caused a local businessman to flee overseas, the auction of his goods included a whole tiger skin. Further evidence of a ready market for tiger skins in China comes from a seizure made in the town of Ruli, on the border between China's Yunnan province and Burma. In 1999, authorities broke open a smuggling ring responsible for trafficking animal parts by post to cities like Guangzhou in southern China. During the operation, 11 tiger skins were seized. The seizures of skins in India, Nepal and China are just a fraction of the total number successfully smuggled to the final buyers. This trade has reached a level where it poses a direct threat to the survival of tigers in the wild. The lack of coordinated enforcement in India means that the traders have the upper hand. Four years on, the accused in the Kaga case have not been convicted, and recent seizure information indicates that the leader of the gang is still active. This man has been arrested in India twice in the space of two years. Each time he was caught red-handed with skins, indicating how easy it is for offenders released on bail to remain active in the trade. And he is not the only one. Sansar Chand, despite being sentenced to five years in prison, is out on bail. Traders involved in seizures as recent as June 2004 have stated that he is still their buyer. This trade continues to have a devastating impact on wild tigers and leopards. And the key countries, India, Nepal and China, need to establish specialised enforcement units and improve cross-border cooperation if we're to see any progress in cracking down on the criminal masterminds that are controlling the trade in urban and cross-border areas.